So I tell them, how you want it, man? I can give it to you any kind of way, so how do you want it? This weekend, Tracy McGrady will get his proper respect when he is inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. And I know I speak for a great many NBA fans when I say I've never seen another player score more easily on other professionals than T-Mac. Born out of a different era of NBA basketball, McGrady was drafted straight out of high school and into a style that still focused on star-driven isolation basketball that led to an incredible amount of impressive highlights. While much has been made on how his injuries cut short what would have been a top 10 of all-time career, he still managed to make the All-Star team seven times, won a Most Improved Player award, led the league in scoring twice, and made one of the All-NBA teams seven times. The height of his scoring prowess came in Orlando when he had back-to-back -back scoring crowns and posted a 30 PER and a true shooting percentage of 56.4% that year. And he did it at only 23 years old. Unfortunately, the rest of the team wasn't anywhere near his talent level and they scrapped to a seven-game series loss against the Pistons team that would become NBA champions the next year. McGrady had so much natural talent oozing from his pores, it was easy to believe him when he said he didn't know exactly what move he was going to make until he did it. At 6'8", he had a distinct advantage over most of his defenders, enabling him to rise up and shoot over them. He did, however, have a traditional for the era two-motion shot, bringing the ball to a set point above his head before releasing. And I suspect this was one reason why his three-point percentage fluctuated and ultimately finished below average for his career. That said, he was one of the first guards to consistently pull up from three off the dribble. So when we make a big deal of Steph Curry doing it, we could simply point to McGrady being way ahead of his time. And in the mold of Michael Jordan and then Kobe Bryant, McGrady also possessed a lethal mid-range pull-up game that kept defenders guessing whether he'd stop and pop or continue all the way to the hoop for some truly astonishing finishes. And it was all those finishes that kept fans on the edge of their seat as he combined a fluidity and grace to elude defenders and softly coax the ball through the net. Time and again, he'd embarrass even the best defenders with his subtle head and shoulder fakes, spin moves, and general ball trickery. He also would abuse his defenders down low in the post, either with back to the basket moves like a traditional big man, or he could face you up, low right by, and finish with either hand through contact. Kobe Bryant wasn't lying when he said McGrady was the toughest player he ever played against, since there just wasn't a way to contain him and prevent him from generating a makeable shot. Believe it or not, we're inside of 50 days till the season starts, and there's no better way to get tickets to any sporting event or concert than with SeatGeek. It's a seamless experience as you can buy tickets, use their grading system to know how great a deal it is, see the vantage point from the seat, and feel confident knowing that every purchase is fully guaranteed. Best of all, use my code BBALL and you'll get 20 bucks off your first purchase. So download the SeatGeek app now and you can be courtside at the Garden to see your new look Knicks against the Pistons on October 21st. And with my code BBALL, turn that savings into an ice cold beverage or two. There were some stains on his career that followed him like a rain cloud. He could never lead his team deep into the playoffs, those damn injuries, and his defense was just so-so. 
but I can't help but wonder what might have been if three different pairings hadn't fizzled out before coming to fruition. The first was with his cousin Vince Carter, who stole the spotlight as soon as he got to Toronto, and while they seemed to get along, it was clear McGrady was unhappy as second fiddle and needed a change of scenery. The other two pairings crashed and burned due to a series of unfortunate injuries to both him and his teammates. In Orlando, he was supposed to pair up with a prime Grant Hill, a dynamic duo that, if healthy, would no doubt have wreaked complete havoc on the league since no other team then had two wing defenders to match up with them. And later in Houston, they just couldn't get full seasons out of both Yao Ming and McGrady, which could have mirrored the kind of domination we saw out of Shaq and Kobe earlier that decade. It was in Houston, however, where fans witnessed his greatest sequence in the NBA. 13 points in 35 seconds to lead his team to a victory over the San Antonio Spurs. With the hometown Rockets fans streaming out of the building, not wanting to see an apparent loss, McGrady went on a ridiculous tear of three-point shooting that left people in utter awe at his abilities. The Spurs in shock and disgust, and McGrady as the hero with a story to tell his grandkids. So in the end, McGrady is judged not by his career numbers or his poor game stats, but what he did in his best six seasons, where he was one of the all-time best at his position, was able to make positive contributions on the defensive end as well, and treated fans to a nightly assortment of dunks, finger rolls, mid-range, and long-distance shots that thrilled and enthralled a generation of kids. While his career was much too short for everyone involved, and the potential for all-time greatness never achieved, it is clear why Tracy McGrady deserves Hall of Fame status, and why he'll join the pantheon of the all-time greats the game of basketball has ever seen. Sports fans, to see more of our great NBA content and analysis, make sure to hit the subscribe button, but also click the bell and adjust your settings so you can get an alert the second our videos drop, because trust me, you're going to want them hot and fresh. You in?